Hi, this is Jeffrey Archer, and I'd like to read you a couple of pages from my new book, Traitor's Gate. It's always puzzled me, said Ross, as they turned into Petit France, why they bother to deliver the crown to Buckingham Palace when they could always take it direct to the House of Commons. I can think of two reasons, said William. First, I wouldn't trust their lordships with the crown jewels overnight. After all, there might well be a Colonel Blood among them. And second, don't forget, the sword of state and the imperial state crown have their own carriage, which precedes Her Majesty whenever she travels the Buckingham Palace to the House of Lords before delivering the Queen's speech. Why not, said William, turning to face his friend. I always assume something will go wrong during the transfer, and let's face it, it only needs to go wrong once. Unlikely, while they're so well protected, and only we know the details of the transfer. In any case, the public never think about the crown jewels being out of the tower for a couple of days. Why should they? Ross remained silent while he considered the possibility that when Danny pulled up outside Scotland Yard, William was the first to leap out. He walked quickly into the building and took the stairs to the second floor, two at a time, before knocking on the door of the Hawks' office. Enter! bellowed a voice. William immediately informed the commander that the annual exercise had once again gone without a hitch. I will only relax, said the hawk. When the resident governor calls me to confirm, the imperial state crown and the sword of state have been returned to the jewel house and are safely locked up for another year. So Ross wasn't the only one who thought that way, was William's immediate reaction. He sometimes forgot that if anything were to go wrong during those critical 15 minutes, he wouldn't be the only person who would have to resign. Well, I'd better get back to the day job, said William. Before you leave, Chief Superintendent, there's something else we need to discuss. It took William a few moments for the news to sink in. The Commissioner called earlier this morning to confirm your promotion. Many congratulations, William. Heaven knows you've earned it. Unusually lost for words, William eventually managed to say, Thank you, sir. I suggest, Chief Superintendent, you forget the day job for a change. Go home and spend some time with Beth and the children. Just make sure you're back at the palace in time to collect the state crown and the sword before returning them to the tower. Because if they're not safely back in place by this time tomorrow, it might become your permanent residence.